All right, welcome to part two of the IREX run cycle tutorial series. In the last video, we animated the cog control as well as the chest control. So if we play the animation here, you can see we're getting some basic animation. Um, we got some nice sort of like overlap on the chest animation by basically just copying the information from the cog control there. But now what we need to do is actually animate the character's feet. Once we animate the feet, it's really going to tie this animation down and it's really going to really bring this character to life. Obviously just seeing the feet translating back and forth, it's not really grounded. There's not really any weight to this run cycle. So once we actually animate the feet, we'll really see this animation come together. And it's just one of those things with a layered approach like this to your animation, you're slowly going to add on more detail. And by adding on more detail, obviously your animation is slowly going to improve. So we can go ahead and pause the animation here and I'm just gonna focus on the right foot for now. So let's go ahead and jump forward to frame three. And first thing I wanna do is just lock this back on the floor. It should not be picking up at this point. Character's weight is completely on the right foot. So we're gonna just zero out the translate Y. All right. And I'm actually going to drag the foot back just a little bit, maybe to around a value of negative 19 or so on the translate Z. And this is something we can always tweak later and we probably will. But right now I just wanna get the correct poses in here for the foot. So at frame seven here, the foot should not be picking up yet. So we're going to zero out the translate Y. We're going to zero out the rotate X and the rotate Z values for now. And I'm also going to translate the foot pretty far back. This is really the point in the run where this foot is really propelling the dinosaur forward. So we wanna make sure that we get that in here. And I'll probably actually translate the foot up and rotate it just a little bit and maybe bring it back just a little bit more. And we're getting some pretty bad stretching here on the leg, but I don't really want to worry about this right now. We still haven't really animated the hips properly, and we also have these sort of hip adjustment controls that will allow us to kind of fix this later on. But right now, I'm really not worried about any hyperextension. I kind of just want to get the legs feeling sort of how they should on this run. And then on frame 10, the foot is going to kind of continue back in this direction. And I can kind of tweak some of the rotation here. And... The rotation on the foot for this run, we can always tweak it later. Kind of right now, what I'm focused on is just getting the overall movement in there of seeing the push off on that foot. And then as it swings forward here, make sure we have this sort of all working properly the way that we want. And on frame 13 already, this pose actually kind of works for what we want. We might actually just rotate it back just a little bit more. And obviously we're not animating the toes yet. That's something we'll animate later on. As we get into a bit more of the polish stage of this animation, we'll begin to animate the toes as well as really start to animate the ankle control as well. But again, we're kind of just trying to get the broad strokes of the foot animation here. On frame 16, however, I'm gonna actually translate it in just a little bit more. And if you are following along, if you want to, you can always sort of just look at my values here and copy them exactly, or you can just sort of just animate your run cycle however you want. There's obviously tons of different ways you can make a run cycle look. So if you want to, you can copy those values or just really work completely independent of any of these values that I'm working with. And then at frame 20, the foot is actually going to really begin to swing forward. Now, obviously this looks really weird because our left foot is not animated. So right now, both feet are off the ground. This is not actually where this is going to happen. So it does look a little bit weird, but as long as we can just keep our focus on just this one right leg. And I'm gonna tweak the rotation a little bit there. And I might actually bring it back just a little bit. And then on frame 23, I'm going to zero out the translate Y because I actually want this on the ground here. Zero out the rotate X and the rotate Z. And I'm going to translate this forward. So I almost want this to feel as if it were sort of reaching out on that step and then it's going to swing back there. All right, and already you can see our right foot is really starting to work nicely. It has a lot more weight to it. Feels like the character's actually putting their weight on this foot on that down position. We're getting a really nice springy push off on that foot in this extension here and then as it swings forward. Now, one thing that we wanna make sure that we do on the actual translate Z of this foot, basically the translation back and forth, we wanna make sure this is a nice linear curve when it's actually on the ground. And once we actually work on translating this walk forward in space, obviously right now we're kind of making a treadmill run cycle. And that's just typically how I approach my run cycles or walk cycles. I'll build first sort of just a basic kind of treadmill walk. And once I actually wanna get into really the fine details of things, 
I actually translate the walk or run forward in space and then tweak my animation there because obviously if you're working on a game, it's going to be translating forward. So you kind of want to see how that will look. And oftentimes when it's actually translating in space and you see your walk moving forward, you'll notice some things that you'll want to change depending on how it feels. And one thing that we want to make sure right now is that on our translate Z, as it's translating backward, there is no sort of like slow in or slow out because if we were to translate this walk forward in space, the foot would kind of have these weird jittery movements back and forth based on the spacing. And we just want to have nice, even spacing moving backward. So on this first keyframe, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the linear tangent there. And I might bring this graph editor up just a little bit so you can see it better. And this keyframe on frame three, I don't really need right now. What I want to do is select the keyframe on frame seven. I'm going to go ahead and break this tangent, select the left tangent handle, turn that to a linear tangent. So now you can see that from frame one to frame seven, we're getting a nice sort of just even flat curve there. So we know there's no like slow in or slow out to this movement as it's actually translating across the ground. And then we want to make sure that on frame 23 to frame 26, that's a nice linear movement. So we'll go ahead and change this to a linear tangent, break the tangent handle on the keyframe on frame 23, and then make that right tangent handle a linear tangent. And you'll notice this isn't really a straight curve. So what we can do is on the keyframe on frame 23 is we're going to just translate that up just to something like that. As I mentioned before, oftentimes once I actually translate this walk forward in space, there's typically tweaks I'll need to make. But right now this is kind of just getting the overall movement in there and we can go ahead and just play this. And you can see we're getting a pretty bad pop in the knee here. So later on, we might reduce the amount of movement this foot is going forward, or we might just adjust this hip control right here to kind of fix that because we do want to have a really nice, strong reach on each one of these steps. But we're really not worried about that at this point. Again, I'm just focused on the overall movement of the foot here. And looking at this here, what I actually want to do is push the amount of height that I'm getting right around frame 20 here. I want to actually bring it up on frame 20, just so that it feels like it's taking a bigger step there and really reaching up with that foot. All right, so we've got our right foot animated. Now let's think about how we're going to animate the left foot. And we can do this very easily by simply just copying the information that we created for the right foot. So this is a run cycle, so we can repurpose and reuse different parts of the animation. And that's something I do quite often when I'm animating. I wanna find ways that I can actually speed up the animation process and one really helpful way to do that is just to reuse and repurpose animation that you already created, just like we did with the cog control, basically just taking all of the translate up and down and the rotation information and just repurposing that and reusing it on the chest control. So we're going to do something very similar for the actual foot placements here. So what I'm going to do in my graph editor here is I have my right foot selected and you want to make sure that you have your infinity curves turned on for both of the feet. So if you don't have that turned on, make sure that you highlight all of your translate and rotation curves and just select them and we can go to pre infinity cycle, post infinity cycle. I already have mine turned on, but if you don't have yours turned on, make sure that you do that. And with all of these keyframes selected, I'm just going to go over here to edit and copy copy all of those. I'm going to go to my left foot here. And with our left foot selected, I'm just going to highlight all of the keyframes except for the keyframes on frame zero. I'm just going to delete all of those out. And then I'm going to highlight all the keyframes on frame zero. And I'm just going to paste what we copied there. So immediately you'll see the left foot pop forward into the same position as the right foot. And if we play this, we're going to get this almost like kangaroo hopping motion. So obviously it's not really what we want for this run cycle. So all we need to do now is just change the position of our curves here. So what I'm going to do in the graph editor is just highlight all of my control curves there, all of those keyframes, and we just need to drag them forward in time. So I'm going to hold shift, middle mouse click, and drag over to frame 13. And if you remember, frame 13 is basically the flipped or opposite step of the pose on frame zero. So you can see we have that now placed over there. And since we have our infinity curves turned on, what we're going to get now is the correct motion that we want in here. So we just shifted all of those keyframes forward. So it's playing the correct animation for our left foot. So really all we did there was just animated the right foot, copied all of that information over to the left foot, shifted it forward in time. And now we're getting the foot placement that we need for this run cycle. 
And immediately you can see our run cycle is really starting to come together. Once we animated the feet, it really ties everything down. The weight is there. It feels like a believable run. The feet aren't just sliding back and forth. So that's something I find quite often is that once I get the cog animated, then I'll want to jump to the feet because that's really important to really start to visualize and see your animation. With the feet just sliding back and forth, it can be a little bit hard to actually focus on some of the other details of your animation. Now again, obviously we're getting some pretty bad popping in the knees. That's something we can definitely fix later on as we begin to adjust some of these hip controls here. But for right now, what we're gonna do is just animate the main hip control just a little bit more for each one of these steps. Now that we actually have the foot animation in there the way that we want, then we can actually start animating the hips. So with the hip control selected, I'm gonna go over here to the rotate X in my graph editor. You can see we don't really have any rotation along the X, and this is going to be really important to get some nice rotation on the X axis for these hips to really get a nice strong feeling in the push off here. So on frame seven, I'm going to drag the hip up to maybe around a value of three or four or so, and we can always adjust this later, but we wanna have sort of this straight spine in here as the back foot here is really pushing off and propelling the irex forward and if you want you could even push this even further and almost get like a reverse spine but for right now we're just going to keep it probably around a value of four and again we can always tweak that later and i don't really need the keyframe on frame three right now if we wanted to we could bring it up and work on the spacing a bit but just to make this simpler i'm just going to delete that keyframe and kind of just use the spacing that maya gives us from frame zero to frame seven on the rotation x and then we can scrub forward here to frame 13. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the keyframe on frame 10. And again, since frame 13 and frame zero is basically just a flipped version of the pose, we know that the rotation along the X axis will be the same as frame zero. So we can go ahead and just keep that value the way it is. And then we'll jump forward to frame 20. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the rotation X value here on the keyframe on frame seven and just paste it here. We can delete these other two keyframes. And then now we should just get some basic rotation along the X axis. And already you can see that adds even more sort of fleshiness and a lot of movement in our spine control. We're getting a really nice push off now, now that we have the feet animated and we have the hips animated there along the rotation X. So we're getting a nice push off. We really feel it all the way through the spine. Now we can also take a look at the rotate Y. Now this should have a little bit of animation on it since it is that mirrored pose of frame zero you see that on frame zero we have a value of 11 and then on frame 13 we should just have that negative value there and so what we should see if we take a look at the top view as the left foot swings forward here we should see the hip swinging forward as well and what i might actually go ahead and do is just delete these keyframes again just to keep things a little bit simpler here and then i'm just going to drag the keyframe on frame 13 down a bit and it doesn't need to be much maybe around a value of negative 12 or so just a little bit to have the hip rotated in the direction of the planted foot there and then i'm going to take this value here that we just created on frame 13 copy that paste it here on frame 0 and frame 26. just to make sure we have the same value i'm going to take out that negative sign there all right, that looks good. So now let's real quickly take a look at the rotation along the Z axis. And we're gonna definitely wanna change this up quite a bit. So as the character really takes all their weight on the right foot here, I wanna actually bring the keyframe down on frame three. And I'll probably bring it down pretty far. We'll push this really far and then later we can dial it back if we need to. But rotate Z is around a value of negative five. And again, as the character puts all their weight on that foot there, we should see the hips really shift that way. And then it will swing back the other way as the left foot swings forward. So we wanna get that initial really strong weight on that down position. And then on frame seven, I'm gonna jump forward and I might actually continue that motion downward to around a value of negative nine or so. And this is one of those things oftentimes you're animating and you're not exactly sure that's what you want but it's kind of one of those things you'll just try, you'll test out, you'll see how it looks once you actually play your animation and then adjust it accordingly. But I kind of want to make sure that the hip is still sort of continuing that rotation. And then what I'm going to do is go to frame 13. I'm going to go ahead and delete the keyframe on frame 10. We don't really need that at this point here. And since again, the pose on frame zero and the pose on frame 13, it's just a flip version for the opposite leg. So we should see that the value on frame zero 
value of 4.528 should be the same on frame 13, just a negative version of that. So what we can actually do for the opposite foot is go to frame 16. We know that this is the down position for this foot. So we'll go ahead and just copy the value on frame three, control C, paste it here on frame 16. We're actually going to bring that to a positive value there. So we should see the hip now rotated this direction here as the left foot takes all the weight of the character. And then on frame 20, I'm gonna copy the value on frame seven, control C, go to frame 20, paste that here, take out that negative value. And then what we'll actually go ahead and do is just delete that keyframe on frame 23. And then we can fix the curve here or the tangent handle. Make sure this is going a bit smoother into that keyframe. And again, we can always adjust this later if we find that this isn't quite working. But right now I kind of like that feeling of it really taking that weight. You can see as soon as it goes into the down position, we have this big steep drop in that value. So we really get a nice strong feeling of weight as that hip shifts over. And then we get that same for the opposite foot there. So up to this point in the run cycle, we've basically just animated the cog control, the chest control, the hip control, and the feet. And by doing that, you can really start to see this animation come together, especially once we got the feet animated in there. And again, we have all this popping, but as we go into more of the polishing process of this animation, we'll actually sort of iron out those little kinks in the animation and actually start to animate the ankles a bit more, as well as the toes. Make sure we get a really nice spread on the feet as they're planting on the ground, again, to get a stronger feeling of weight in there. But that's actually going to wrap it up for this part. What we're going to do in part three is begin to animate the neck and the head of this character here. And that will be sort of one of the last really big missing pieces for this run cycle. Obviously the tail is not animated yet. That's something we'll worry about later on. But once we get the neck and the head in there animated, it's really going to have all the main pieces of this run cycle animated. And then after that, we'll go back and animate things like the arms and the hands, and then go back and animate the tail, and then do sort of a polish pass for this run cycle. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in part three.